Hi, Jim Follum here from Skills Upgrade. So let's go through the three steps to carry out the continuity of ring circuit farm conductors. So uh, when testing, we're looking to see that the test measurements agree with the design. Proportionality of conductors is useful and that it enables us to check results as we go along. Uh, examples shown here indicates that if we double the length of a conductor of a given CSA, we double the resistance. If we double the CSA for a given length, we halve the resistance. A useful value to remember for a ring circuit is the proportionality ratio between a 2.5 and 1.5 conductor. Uh, and that is 1.67. An example is given at the bottom of the slide. Another useful resource is table I1 of the on-site guide. This gives us the resistance of a conductor in milliohms per metre. So if we have an idea of the circuit length, we can calculate what test measurements to expect. There are three steps when uh, we check the continuity of conductors and it is important that they are carried out in the correct sequence. Uh, step one is the end-to-end -end resistance of each conductor and it's measured separately. Step two, the open ends of the line neutral conductors are connected together so that the outgoing line conductor is connected to the return neutral conductor. Step three, same process is repeated for the line of the CPC. Step one, uh, we measure the end-to-end -end of each conductor. Uh, line is represented as uh, lowercase r1, neutral lowercase rn, and the CPC lowercase r2. Now, these are not to be confused with the uppercase r1 plus r2, which will be the figure we enter onto the certificate. Uh, we give an example of a circuit 30 metres in length and using table I1 we would expect a measurement of 0.22 for both line and neutral. The CPC would be 0.36 of an ohm. Step two, after connecting ends as shown, a measurement is taken at each socket outlet where the readings should be substantially the same. Step three, we connect ends as shown and this time we measure the resistance between the line and earth connections at each socket. The reading should be substantially the same and this is the R1 plus R2 of the circuit which will be entered onto the certificate. As shown for this example we have 0.145 of an ohm. This is a schematic representation of the result of cross-connecting conductors. So from a circuit of 30 metres length we can see that by cross-connecting the line of neutral conductors we now have two conductors in parallel, i.e. double the CSA. So from inverse proportionality we know that the resisted resistance will be half. We've also halved the length and again halved the resistance, hence we end up with the formula of lowercase r1 plus lowercase r2 divided by 4 will give us the r1 plus r2 of a circuit. The results entered onto the certificate for this test are as shown. r2 is not necessary. Uh, some certificates include 
a requirement to tick a Leibniz neutral test. Spurs on a ring circuit may increase the R1 plus R2 of a circuit. This would depend on location of a spur and length of cable and need to be taken into account. A couple of things to remember when continuity testing. Uh, first one is contact resistance and another one is uh, to remember to null the test leads. If testing for EICR purposes, other considerations need to be taken into account. Another thing regarding ring circuits is that when checking the validity of documentation provided for an installation, a brief examination of the test results entered give good indication of competence. It's not the only thing you should check, but my experience tells me it's one of the first things I check. Well, hope you have found this video helpful and of use. Feedback and comments are very welcome plus ideas for future videos and don't forget to subscribe thank you